What's up guys, it's Brad from The Architect here. In this video, I'm going to be showing the compositing breakdown of our recently uploaded power plant explosion tutorial. This specific video is not really a tutorial, but it should give you a pretty good idea on how I composited the various passes together to get the final result. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of After Effects where we composited all of our different blender passes. As you can see, this is our final result here, so I'll just play through it really quick. So we have our explosion, we've added some glow and glare, and then composited our debris and uh, rigid body simulation with it. So I'll just go through the layers one by one to give an idea of how I created this final result. This first layer is just our background. We've just added a gray solid. Two layers above this, I have our main beauty pass of our rigid body simulation here, which is just our main beauty pass of the destruction we've created inside of Blender, as you can see here. Above the beauty pass of our rigid body simulation, I have our main explosion, which I've masked out in a very specific way to make sure that some of the rigid body simulation in the center of our explosion here is uh, kind of in front of our explosion here. So I've just used a little subtract mask here on top of our explosion so that this specific area has part of that rigid body simulation showing. Another way you can do this is by using a Z depth pass so that you can composite your explosion within your uh, 3D geometry but I didn't render out a Z pass for this specific shot so I just uh, did some masking here around uh, the explosion and let some of our rigid body simulation come through. I've added some effects to our main explosion as well. I've uh, adjusted the hue and saturation to bring down the yellow saturation and yellow lightness and then and I've also, under the red channel, brought up the red saturation and brought down the red lightness, which uh, greatly affects how the simulation looks. It's going to kind of bring the levels down, but also push more red into the explosion, which uh, gives a little bit different look, but uh, this kind of depends on your taste. In addition to the hue and saturation effect, I've added several glow effects as well, which uh, just kind of add some basic glow effects to the hot parts of our explosion here. How most glow effects work is you'll have a threshold that can control which parts of the image will have glow added to it and then you can control your glow radius and glow intensity separately. I've also made the color of these specific glows orange and red. So I've added two different glow effects here. The second glow effect is uh, just the same thing except I've increased the glow threshold a little bit and increased the radius of that glow. Then I also have added a curves effect to the beauty pass of our explosion as well. As you can see here, it's just brightening up the image so that it blends into our beauty pass of our building here. I've added another layer of hue and saturation to uh, dial down the saturation a little bit. As you can see, I've just brought down the saturation by six. And then finally, I've added some CC radio blur, which I've keyframed to be most intense at the very beginning of our explosion and then come down as our explosion settles later in the scene. And as you can see here, if I uh, isolate our explosion layer, this is what we're getting. And if I take away all of the effects, that is our explosion without the effects added. And then with the effects, Anyway, so after adding our explosion beauty pass, I've added our explosion emission pass on top of it. As I've mentioned before, the emission pass output from Blender is going to isolate the emission part of the flames so that you can composite and add glow to your flames more effectively. So as you can see here, if we turn it on, it's going to isolate the uh, hot spots of our simulation here. I've also added those same uh, hue and saturation and glow effects to this layer as well. And uh, if we isolate it, you can see the emission pass by itself. It's just the hot spots of the uh, simulation and if we open up our transform settings you can see that I've dialed down the opacity to make it not quite as bright so as you can see here if I disable it and re-enable it it's just another layer that's adding some more glow to our scene above our emission pass I've added our debris field rendered on a separate layer as you can see here adding some nice uh, concrete debris to our scene if we render it out separately you can see that I've just masked out a certain portion of it because I wanted to blend the concrete debris into the explosion a little bit better um, so I just masked out a certain portion to make the debris look like it was coming out from the destruction of our rigid body. So as you can see here, if I uh, play back our debris field by itself, this is what we're getting. And uh, I didn't add any effects to this specific pass. However, I probably should have added some motion blur to blend it into the environment even better. But uh, it looks pretty good in my opinion. And I think it definitely brings our explosion some more realism. After adding our debris field, I've uh, just simply created a yellow solid here and turned the layer mode to add. As you can see here, I've adjusted the hue and saturation a bit, brought down the uh, master saturation because it was a little bit too saturated for our scene. Um, but what this uh, medium yellow solid is gonna do 
this is just going to add some very basic glow i've added a mask around the very center of our explosion and then i feathered that mask so that it kind of fades off into the background here as you can see when i take the feathering off it's just a mask that's tinted slightly orange and then when i increase the feathering on it it's going to add some nice glow over top of our footage here in a nice way to help blend everything together Finally, the last layer that I added to our scene here was this adjustment layer. As you can see here, when we enable it, I've added some basic color correction through Lumetri Color, and then I've also added a lens flare at the very beginning of our explosion to uh, blend it into our environment even more. So as you can see here, right when the explosion goes off, I've added just a very, uh, very subtle lens flare here, as you can see, and I've actually animated the lens flare to kind of follow the direction of the explosion. So as you can see here, if I kind of go forward in the blast, the lens flare is actually moving here to kind of mimic where the explosion is going. This effect is pretty subtle. I fade out the brightness of the lens flare pretty quickly, but it's just a nice little trick if you want to add a little bit more emphasis to your initial explosion. This background layer is simply a duplicate of our main explosion beauty pass. As you can see here, just a desaturated version of our explosion. And the reason I did that was just to kind of create a little bit more harder edge around the edge of our explosion. As you can see here, when we disable it and re-enable it, it just creates a little bit more emphasis on the edge of the explosion explosion which I think creates a little bit more separation with the background but not really a necessary layer just a duplicate of our main explosion that I've tweaked the saturation and master lightness of to add a little bit more separation from our background. Anyways guys that's it for this short compositing breakdown I hope it was helpful as always feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.